joining us again tonight for Let's Talk. As you can see, I have I'm Ariel, I have baby sis April in here, and tonight we have a guest co-host. I have T Dog from TPC Cartel. And before we dive into our conversation for tonight, we're gonna get to know a little bit about our guest host, and then we'll dive into our conversation. Yeah, get it correct. Mm -hmm. All right, T Dog. Um, let me ask you this before I jump into the questions I have for you. Explain to me exactly because you're the CEO of TPC Cartel. Explain mm -hmm. to me exactly what that is. TPC Cartel is an entity, it is a clothing company, okay. a rap duo, mm -hmm. a family, you know, a brand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's so uh, it's just it's, it's numerous things. Okay. Is it, so basically, is it does it have? Because our conversation tonight, I want to dive into the hip hop genre culture. So I know TPC mm -hmm. Cartel kind of dives into the hip hop. Do you have artists and things of that nature? So let me ask you this: How long have you been in the entertainment business? I've been in the entertainment business for seriously for the last seven years. Seven years? Yeah, but I've been doing it, doing my like music since I was like uh, 10. 10? Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. And what are some of your inspirations when it comes to music? Uh, my inspiration, like, when it comes to music, my inspiration, my daddy was one of my biggest inspirations. He rapped. Was he a rapper? Yeah, he rapped. He's from Brooklyn, New oh, York. Oh, okay. Okay, That's okay. Dope. Brooklyn, okay. Brooklyn, New York. Okay, okay. So you heard your dad rap and kind of decided that you like what his style of rap, or that you decided that at that point you wanted to be a rapper? Not really. It just was in me. Like I never really. It just I always was doing music and doing stuff that had to do with entertainment. Nigga, like I was breaking down the Michael Jackson shit on TV when it came on. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I always LL Cool J. <laughs> she come on, listen, I'm serious. I was always, I was always learn the lyrics and and knowing them. And shit, so I just always knew music. Like when I found out that my daddy, you know, cause uh, he was in Brooklyn, I was being raised in Alabama. So you know what I'm saying? We wasn't, uh, you know, around each other all the time. So when I did find out he was doing music, I was like, shit, she daddy do music too? Uh, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, so do you have any music out yourself? Any albums, EPs? Yes. yes. Okay, okay. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, you made me smile talking about yeah. that. That's my work right there. Okay, I tell got, us about it. I got six. I'm on my sixth project right now. Okay. Uh, Dog Mode EP that dropped September the 26th. And what okay. is that about? Uh, Dog Mode. It's a it's a mindset. You know what I mean, it's like oh, mindset. Yeah. Tell me, mindset, dog mode. So, so yeah, I'm a dog. I'm finna dog out. The yeah. ladies? No, not, no, not necessarily. Well, who's dogging out? The industry. There you like, go, okay. dog out. It's you know, you know, uh, people, certain type people, stereotypes. Like as I discussed that on American Pie. Like each track is is is, is six tracks on. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's an EP six tracks on there. Each track, uh, I'm attacking, you know, what I feel like is the problem. Okay. Okay. The problem with in, in, in the industry? In the industry, hood. in the hood. Okay. With mentality. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sound good. So I did do a little bit of research on you. I wanted okay. to make sure... You know what I'm saying? You was legit in, you know, coming with what you thought. And I kind of found something inter interesting. Um, explain to our viewers exactly uh, what the Feed the Hood Foundation is, how it came about, what it represents, and your part in it. Uh, Feed the Hood Foundation, I started that two years ago. Okay. What is it? It's about helping people. You know what I'm saying? It's from the project. Not just from like the projects where I'm from, other projects like Avondale, Gate City. Avondale where I'm from, but like Gate City, you know what I'm saying, Kingston. Being able to go around and feed people, and not just with 
food with knowledge, being able to right. help a brother pull him up. You know, I've been doing movies and stuff too, so <clears throat> I've elevated and pulled a lot of brothers up and got them focused on some entertainment shit. Like, you can get some positive. Yeah. Some positive. Yeah. That's what's up. That's a, what, and, and a lot of the time <coughs> we don't see that, you know, coming up with, with anybody in trying to uh, obtain a something in the music industry, we don't see right off them giving back. They kind of be on that one track, let me get to where I need to get, and right. then I'll try to do what I can do along exactly. the way. Mm-hmm. But for the fact that you started off, before you obtained the goal you want, you kind of started off saying, okay, even with the little bit I have, let me try to find a way to get back. And I feel like that's super dope. Uh, also, I know that sure. you, I personally, me and my husband love hood movies. We have watched every type of hood movie on YouTube that has ever came out by anybody. And I know you've gotten off into your own filming of your own hood movie. Yeah. So give me a little bit of rundown as far as, you know, your hood, how you got off into that. And I know you kind of had connections with JT, the bigger nigga, you know. So, bigger figure. Bigger figure? Yeah. Okay, you had some connections. My nigga, the bigger figure. Okay, you <laughs> had some connections with him. So, kind of tell me about that and how that all tied in. Um, I started, I did my first movie, Street Life, 20, uh, what that was, 2014. I did my first movie. I started in it. And, uh, <clears throat> And that kind of struggled up from there. I was already wanting to uh, get into acting and stuff like that. And it kind of landed. My, to my my Mexican partners, you know, they were like, yo, Tito, we shooting the movie, home. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I yeah. Like, we want you in it. So I'm like, shit. All right. Shit, we, okay. That was my first movie. And so when I did that, I was doing that. I was already uh, doing music. So I did that, uh, I think Fig came to the city in 2015. He, I met him in 2015. And before, he, for those of you all who don't know who Fig is, I really started knowing him from the hood movie Snow on the Bluffs. Snow. He played a character in there, so that's Two. when I kind of started getting off into who boots. he was yeah. and what he represented. So. You, you can continue. Yeah, so, uh, nah. Met that nigga, uh, 2015. I linked up with him. He came to the city. He was looking for a way to, uh, see what he do is, he big on trying to help folks in the hood and give them back and stuff, too. So, uh, he was looking for, he always looked for somebody who's, you know, significant in the community that he can go to and stand on, like, yo, Let's go to the hood and do yeah, this shit like that. So when it came to Avondale, I was that guy. And that's how we kind of linked up. I reached out to him. We talked. We talked for like an hour or something. We had a meeting the next morning. It was on there since then. I've been fucking with him since then. And uh, that's my brother and stuff like that, which, you know. Um, yeah, still communicate? Yeah. But that's it's, it. but JT, JT. That nigga, uh, what that mean? Uh, now look, what that mean? Nah, you know, on this one. What that mean? Nah, you know he uh he good people. He good people. It's just like uh when you have a brother relationship with a person, you know you, you even brothers quarrel. Yeah, you know I have dis- disagree agreements and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So You're right. ain't nothing going on. That's my brother. I love him. He taught me a lot. He showed me some significant things. Gave me some significant pointers on to what I was already doing. Yeah, he does, he does. Yeah. So yeah. That's all when it comes to my dog. That's that's what I can say about that. And anything else anybody else say or have something to say about, you know, they can holler at me. You know. <laughs> but uh I, yeah, that's that that's what we have with that. But uh, he helped me and inspired me. He was like, cause I had a script. Yeah, that's another thing. I had a script, I was writing the script. He was like, nigga. I've been a shot two movies and, and edited them and put them out by the time you through with your script. Yeah. This is a new style. He just showed me a new style of putting the movie together and that's how I put uh 
Harlem Streets to go. Harlem Streets, yeah. For those who, who have not seen that, go check it out on YouTube. Part of the Streets is really dope for yeah. those of you all that are in the hood. Right. I'm super into it. So for those who are on it, I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. Uh, once I post the video, Heart of the Streets, check it out on YouTube. Nope. Um, also, do you have any artists? Like, have you uh, started getting to signing artists or anything? If so, do you want to shout one of them out? Oh, man, I got I got two dope artists that are supposed to be here right now. But they love ripping and running the streets. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to break them out of that, but nah, uh, BMRD man and Cartel Black, though, facts. They they very talented, it's just some things that they young, and some things we gotta work out, but they very talented. Yeah, I heard they some clips of their songs, I think I heard B-Man song, like three, three of his clips. Really dope. You know who he put me in the mind of? I'm old school. So he kind of, his music kind of put me in the mind of like Dirty Boys. Yeah. Um, so, it, okay. yeah, yeah, the clips that right I have same, heard, same yeah, yeah. It, it's a good feel. So I can't wait till they come out. I'll check them out or whatever. Uh, but before we jump, I think we've learned a bit about you. You know what I'm saying? So now that we kind of know your background and what you come from, we're going to kind of dive into tonight's conversation. So, baby sis, take over from there. Ask our co-host some questions tonight. <laughs> okay, Tito. Oh, mm. hey. Okay, so, yeah, I think we got to know you a little bit more, but that's about you um, and what you're doing. I want to know kind of more about what you think, how you think, your opinions on certain things. So, um, <laughs> since, you, you know, we already talking about, um, you know, your, everything you got going on, um, Especially by your, you're talking about your artists and, you know, it's a lot going on in the industry right now. So, starting off, um, what do you think about our current condition as far as the, our rap culture? Oh, man. I think it's, it sucks right now. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. See, I, I'm going to say this. I think it needs adjustment. How? It needs some adjustment. <coughs> the rap game right now needs more genres. <coughs> okay. I agree. Because I'm not going to knock nobody for how they get their money. If you want to mumble when you rap or if you want to rap fast or be lyrical or whatever it is, it just needs more genres added to it so you can be able to put people in their correct box. And be more versatile. Yeah, and you, and you just want to be able to mix them in with, with people who... I just feel like everybody sounds the same. These yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you need the same the sound the same category, uh, genre. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody sounds the same. Guess who this is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you saying everybody sound the same. So do you feel like it's any real real niggas still in the stick or any stand up guys left in the industry now? Oh, man. It's a few. Does that sound like a lot I'm of I'm like, I've <laughs> met a lot of these guys. And, you know, my take on them, some of them, some of them, a lot of them just. Might have been around the streets or around some shit, you know what I'm saying? And for the most part, there's some real street niggas in it, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But most of these guys nowadays, they, they some perpetrators. Like, you know, some nigga ain't murdered nobody, ain't been in a trial and have to be charged. And so they be lagging. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So do you think it's more to where? It's entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, it's entertainment. But do you think it's more people that's actually out here trying to do it for the money? Or for people who actually trying to do it for their actual love of what the music is? Or to try to get some knowledge out here or do something positive? Because like you said, a lot of people will say this is what their message is, but in actuality, they also told totally different shit. I think for the most part, now... Niggas want money. <laughs> like, niggas don't even care about the craft. Yeah, niggas don't care. See, I care about my craft. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't think there's a lot of lyrical artists out here anymore. Right. I feel oh. like everybody is based off of the beat. Uh, like, you feel like the beat is important. It's, it's just as important on what you're saying to it to me. And I don't feel like a lot of people are saying a whole bunch of nothing. Yeah, even if you got to talk about some negative shit, at least let me want to hear what the fuck you got to say. The content. Mm -hmm. The content of what you're saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. People don't take the time with their music no more. They're not putting 
All right, y'all, let me ask you this question. So, to me, when it comes to the entertainment industry, a lot of the controversy and the beefs and the things that go back and forth between celebrity artists and local artists, to me, it seems to happen and unfold all on social media. Right. Like, how do you think social media from when we, we was young and mm -hmm. growing up to now, how do you think that has affected the way people and, and, and rappers respond to beef when it comes to each other? These niggas like to talk a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, we, you, when we were younger, niggas we had to come see. We ain't have no communicate. Just tell a nigga you, you want to show a nigga you going to do something to him. The only way was to go do something right, because you couldn't even go, you couldn't, this, the message wasn't even going to get to him right. Mm -hmm. Send a message. By the time it get to him, it's going to be way more fucked up than what you said anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were pulling up back in the day. Now, niggas want to go on there and tweet and get on the gram and make a vent video and talk post shit status. and post statuses. Like, nigga, they going to lock you up. Gee, it's so Hell no. I think it got real stupid. Real yeah, stupid. so like you said, everybody around the same place. So do you think that most of the beef is coming from the fact that it's personal and they from y'all all from the same place, or is it because of social media amping it up and it's something different? Yeah, so and see that's the thing. Once you put it on the media, people take it and run with it. See now you put it out to the worldwide web. That's the world. You got people that's gonna come in from anywhere. Everywhere and make it amp it up, and they gonna the internet gonna win every time. You can't win against the internet. You sure can't. They gonna win every time. Oh, so can't. once some, once the internet get hold to it, whether it's real or fake, people run with this shit. You know what I'm saying? They gonna start doing their own thing with it. This nigga gonna make thirty different memes with it. This nigga gonna make thirty different videos and twenty five. You know some shit. What happened to the code? Like, the nigga code? Or the I was just saying, the street like, code? Does that shit still exist? Cause, like, it, it exists for niggas who was raised and cut by that cloth and have that. Ah, but that so let me ask you this. Where the niggas at? Right. And why did they allow the street code to be That's so why y'all got me in him. See? <laughs> like, but, but That's why I'm in him. How it got so twisted to where snitching is now glorified? Like Glorified every, rats. They yeah. make movies about glorified rats every day and then try to make them look like the biggest dope dealers and they were the biggest this. No, that nigga was a snitch. Yeah. I ain't going <coughs> to <around. coughs> Ain't nothing gangster about telling on the nigga. Uh, yeah, I used to get whoopings in kindergarten for yeah. this shit. Yeah. Tell it on Stop telling, telling on every day about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Trade. yeah, so by it being so many so-called unreal ass niggas in the industry, do you think, and it's full of them, because that's what hip hop is now, these mama rappers and all of that shit. Do you think it's possible? You know how they say hip hop is dead? Yeah, do you I think I, it's dead, or nah, do you think it's still alive? Nah, I'm not going, like I said, I feel like they need to add more genres. You got, you, when so it comes to, can shine. look, check this out. When it comes to urban music, you have hip hop. So there's a now you have music. trap music. Now true, true. trap, but you know it need more genres added. It need it needs more. The, it needs to be advanced. With Does it need more genres, or do it do the people who used to represent that genre just need to come back? They Not trying, but it be it's so hard because you have. You going to, when they try to come back, that's why it's so hard for motherfuckers to come back now. That's why niggas taking reality show jobs and all type shit like that to get back on top now and become back relevant because it's hard to connect with the new crowd. They don't, they really don't care about what's real no more. They only care why, about entertainment. Why? They only care about entertainment now. It's, everything is entertainment. What happened so, though? Like, and then to me, we ain't that far behind. Stop being entertaining. Oh, like, when the industry made it that way. Yeah. When, 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 when the industry started making not real, real, and pushing that into, you know, that's why, you know, growing up, you think about it like this growing up, see baby and cash money, you know, with all these cars and shit, and then, yeah, I don't need cars. 
Fast forward to now, niggas didn't own none of them cars. See, it's the image. Ooh, good. That shit like that. So then you blur the line between real and fake to where now fake becomes the new real. Okay. Agree. See what I'm saying? So do you think that's why more artists that are coming out, I have noticed like more artists are going independent yes. and, and trying to, to make it without being attached to a label or an industry as far as popularity? Because I do I do feel like social media does help local and upcoming rappers in a positive way because you can basically promote yourself. Right. And you really don't have to be attached. It's all about how much work you're willing to put in. There you go. Instead of being attached to a label. So do you feel like, have you seen the difference with you being independent versus trying to, the goal is to get signed instead yeah. of working? Most definitely. <clears throat> the difference is I'm in control. I got mm -hmm. creative control. Mm -hmm. I got control of my money. I got control of my masters. I own my content. See, that's the difference. You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> if, I, if, 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 I, if I hustle up and sell a million records, I made that money. And you ain't got to pay it out. You ain't got to pay it out. I have to pay what I want to pay. That makes me the, the big dividend. You know what I'm saying? The big motherfucker mm -hmm. getting the, you know, the, the big dividends out of it. I don't want <clears throat> Ain't no, I ain't going nowhere where a motherfucker gonna get more off of my work than me. Yeah, I hear you on that shit. So the industry fucked up though. Like everybody on some shit like that, don't fuck them bad ass contracts how they be doing folks and shit like this. Just the thing though, I'm not gonna say that shit part of the industry. If it, if you let it happen to you, it happens to you. That's how I feel. So if you Sign that contract and you ain't had no lawyer or nothing like that, then that's how they played out. If you wasn't smart enough to know how what, what you was going into, you going in, then that's how it played out. If the industry is the industry. But don't it's you think a lot of people not get those chances because they won't go through with it? They won't sign those contracts? And that's why you got a lot of talented ass people out here who yeah. ain't, you know what I'm saying, going as far as they could. So it's got to be something else that got to be, be able to be done on their end because you ain't finna. Tell me, hopefully, that the industry just dominate. I feel like it's got to be something that you're going to be able to do to push it to get to that point without that. Yeah, just get on your grind. You can do it. It's just sometimes people don't like to work hard. Yeah. A lot of people like, that's another reason why people sign as artists. Because, because shit, that, all I got to do is get on some tracks. And tell them what to say. Nah, I just, nah, they ain't. They gonna tell you. That's just the most out here. Yeah, all I gotta do is give them some track. Now, nah, what I'm saying is, go record the songs, and give it to them, and the label hit me with a schedule, my shows, my promo, my. I ain't gotta worry about none of that. But when you're independent, you gotta worry about all that. Yeah, see, that ain't the label. When you're independent, you functioning as a label. You got to worry about your press. You got to worry about your release. You got to worry about your promo, your marketing. You're, you're recording the project from the beginning to the end. You got a crew? Yeah. Okay. You got a team? Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. I do feel yeah. like you still, even if you do be independent, you still have to surround yourself with a team. Of, of course. But still, still you can't, you can even when you surround yourself with, with them people, though, you got to still be the most the most motivated out of those people because they, they're straight away still. People like, like, this shit, like, you got to want this shit like how you breathe. Right? You got to live, to live, the, you got to breathe, right? So you got to want this shit like you living. You see what I'm saying? So you got to wake up thinking this, go to sleep thinking this, and that's how you elevate on plans and execute shit, and that's how you be dedicated. You got to be, that's, that's creating a dedicated role and people scared to be dedicated to some shit. That's just like being in a marriage or relationship. Like mm -hmm. people be in that shit, they scared to be dedicated to that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, you gotta be if you gotta be dedicated to hard work, some people just don't like that. People like the easy way out. Yeah, and then I do feel like a lot of people also look at it like it's just a job. It's a high paying job. I really don't I do it 
enough to get paid. Yeah. So that's where you get all of these artists that's coming out and you just be like, what the fuck and why the fuck are they out and why? How? How are they even popping right now? Because they ain't give a fuck. But I do believe that a lot of the old school traditional hip hop genre, it has completely disappeared. I think it's gone underground more so. Like I have to go on YouTube to go and listen to some lyrical content when it comes to rapping. Right. And I just feel like it sucks. And a lot of the local artists coming out, I can say a lot of the local artists here in Birmingham that I have heard do have some pretty good lyrical content. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like it don't get displayed the way that it should. See, now, this, this is an old, this is, this is the thing about that. You can be the dopest artist in the world. Right, just like you said, but it, it, it's not getting displayed, right? All right, check this out. But they can, it's so many platforms and so many ways now. People just scared to invest, like, invest people, yeah, people. they're scared. People, people are scared to invest. They're scared to, to be devoted. they scared. People scared. So, like, if you got to invest in yourself, you can, you can drop your shit and have it 250, 300 platform worldwide selling everywhere. But is you gonna spend the money to do it? Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Cause you're taking a risk. Yeah, simple as that. Or is you gonna not? Some people don't even do the research to know, find out how to do that. They think it's so far fetched that they ain't gonna even try to do research. People let reading scare them all. Like, oh, I gotta, I gotta find out how to do this. Ha! Ah. Mm -hmm. Shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like we play a big part in that though, cause at the end of the day, the industry is only. Promote what's selling. That you know what I'm saying? So I feel like if we stop but, feeding into the shit and if we stop supporting the shit, then you're going to have to All right, guys, before we close out tonight's topic, we're going to play a little either or with T Dog here with the CEO for TPC Cartel. And T Dog, I want to know from you between these artists, who are you going to choose either or? Tupac or Biggie? Always, I'm, I'm a Tupac fan. I love Tupac. I love everything he represents. I love his messages. Mm -hmm. But as far as when it goes to just straight listening to music or doing something like that, I'm mm -hmm. a big Biggie. Um, yeah. Because Tupac, and I love and I, and I would pick him over like everything he represents. He's not just he's an amazing person, a poet, and all of that. But as far as just me, if I'm just listening to music mm -hmm. and I want to turn get in the car and turn some music on, I'm gonna turn on Biggie. Listen, before I turn on Tupac. Why I made my selection? I listen to both of them. Both of them are great. Yeah. But I can listen to pop shit and go anywhere. Yeah. My, yeah. My, my emotions. When I say that, my emotion yeah. wise. Damn, I feel bad for her. <laughs> okay. Now, nah, man, boy, I want to go round. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Who is that song? I'm going to punch that in the face when I see him. All right. There it is. You know, you take go through the most. When you listen to Biggie, they be on some shit like you want to go grab a bra or you. Laid back. Oh, yeah, it's more laid back yeah. shit. Yeah, you know it's more laid back. Cooling and vibing. Hey, uh, you cool like, yeah. And you uh -huh. mean you can run this boo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But Pop, that been putting feeling in your soul. And he gonna put some knowledge in your Yeah, there's some knowledge. See, that's the, and that's the more, that's even more so why, you know, a lot of people pick Pop because his message was deep. Yeah. Biggie, he delivered a message too. Biggie was like a real, he was a dope boy rapper. One mm -hmm. of the first. Like, yeah. so, uh, to be I do feel like Biggie had some great music and it's probably some that was better than Tupac, but I feel like Tupac reached outside of the music industry and agree. touched the uh -huh. culture in a different way. So that's why I say overall person, I'm a Tupac over Biggie. Now. See, and I, that's, I'm not even picking from the music. I'm just picking from the music standstill of with Pop, the messages he put in the music mm -hmm. and the emotions he used in different... He gonna take you a different... Want this, Every song ain't gonna sound the same. He might sound the same, but the beat right. and the way he flow or the energy gonna be different. I Brenda's agree. got a baby ain't gonna be the same as, you know what I'm saying, America's Most Wanted with Snoop. You know what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? I love it. So, so, yeah, I got you. I yeah, agree. Bro. Okay. Uh, Ludacris or Eminem? Eminem. 
gotta put Manny up against somebody. Yeah, like, yeah. Manny, and Manny, he'll kill us all day long. Man, you know what I'm saying? Baby Lou is in every category. That nigga, baby, nah, he gonna be gonna act some shit. Yeah, he gonna be acting like a baby. Yeah, he's gonna be acting like a baby. 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 He's gonna